Okay, in this demonstration, I am painting on a piece of cotton fabric. Underneath, I put some watercolor paper, which will absorb a little bit of the paint. And then usually the watercolor paper ends up with interesting patterns and I can turn that into a painting. I'm going to do Helen Frankenthaler's soak stain method of painting. Um, but because my piece of fabric is smaller, I'm not gonna do the whole pouring technique. I'm going to use these, um, it's more like Japanese type brushes, which will hold a lot of paint. And I'm gonna try and show you a variety of techniques. So I think I'm just gonna do bands of color. And here is this liquid fabric paint, Dynaflow. So I've got this brush is holding a lot of paint. The Japanese brushes, you hold them a little bit differently than like the acrylic and oil painting brushes. I hold it straight up. If I barely touch the surface, I think what you're seeing, you barely touch it, the paint and the absorbency of the fabric go to work for you. I get a line, but it's a little bit of a fuzzy line. Okay, now I'm gonna add more pressure. So more of the flat part of this brush. I'm going to go pink right next to it. And what's really fun about this is the pink will bump up to that, I think it's a midnight blue or a periwinkle. It's going to bleed a little bit into each other, but it's, it's going to hold the line. So it's kind of amazing how much control um, I still have. Okay, let's see. Now I'm going to go just straight water here. And then I'm going to drop color into that. This will be wet on wet. I'll just drop some color. So the wet on wet, it's it's still going to hold that line shape, but it'll spread and be a little more diffuse. Okay, now I'm going to add some pink in there. Again, it will spread out, but then it will bump up against that periwinkle and shouldn't move beyond it too much. Okay, I'm gonna introduce, uh, I think another color. So I'm just going to drop color on here. OK. 
Okay, and then I'll get another color. There's no water on here, and yet when I drop these circles on, it's going to bump up next to those other yellow circles. So I like the way it just, there is some control there. It holds its shape. Okay, I'm going to go a little darker green in here. Hmm, it's not that much darker. It's very watery. Okay, um, let's see. Darker emerald green. There we go. So you can do the same thing with acrylic paint. You just need to thin it down evenly with water or if you're using the high flow acrylic, I think it's the high flow, you can just drop it right on there. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll do that in a minute. Okay, but the other thing is once the fabric gets really saturated with paint, it will not hold anymore at a certain point. So like if I painted this purple and I just said, oh, I really want that another color, it's not like acrylic paint where I can layer over it. At a certain point, it's absorbed all of the paint that it can hold. Okay, let's say you want a specific shape. I could intentionally paint that shape. And then this is where I'd pour or with my brush fill it. And it should move up to that outlined edge and not move beyond, ideally. Okay, if I want that to spread out a little bit, I could hit it with my spray bottle. And now it's gonna spread out. I'm gonna add some salt in there. There's different you know, grades of salt, really fine. I'm just putting this big Himalayan rock salt right on there. It's gonna take about 15 minutes and it'll absorb that paint and create a speckled effect. I'm trying to find my high flow here. Here we go. No. Well, I guess I've left that in the house. I was going to just drop that on. It's very much, it's a little bit thicker, but it's very much like this paint, highly pigmented, concentrated um, dye. Okay, let's see what else can I do. I can use, I like this angled brush. So you can use your, you know, regular oil paint acrylic brushes as well if you want. You're just going to get a different um, line quality. As a matter of fact, I will try my fan brush here and see what I get. It's kind of nice. It uh, absorbs in certain
certain areas and on others I get a rougher line. Now, if you don't know, um, you don't have to come up with a composition today if you want to do a number of tests like this just to see what playing with the absorbency first, that might be a good idea. Okay, what else on here? What else am I have I not tried? I'm going to hit this with a little bit of water and see if it spreads. Should spread a little bit in the lower area. Okay, the next thing I'm going to try is, which Helen Frankenthaler, I think, did not do, is I am going to, on top of this, and I could wait till it dries, but I'm going to do it while it's wet, I'm going to put some thicker acrylic impasto paint. And I'm going to go straight acrylic. I'm not adding any water. use my palette knife if I want. A little scruffito. So I'm just combining multiple techniques here. Why not? Um, So I'm just playing with all the different techniques, wet on wet, um, more paint, less paint, more pressure, less pressure, salt, uh, impasto paint on top. Now, if you want to add the salt, you need to do it when your fabric is wet. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. 